heart failure is a condition in which the heart is no longer able to meet the perfusion demands of the body. Acute heart failure is when this deterioration happens suddenly, either in a previously healthy patient or in a patient with a previous cardiomyopathy. These are known as de novo acute heart failure and acute decompensated heart failure. Let's start with a bit of physiology on the cardiac output, which is the volume of blood pumped by the heart in a minute. It's given by the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. Remember, not all the blood in the ventricle gets pumped out during systole. The volume of blood in the ventricle before it starts contracting is around 110 milliliters, known as the end diastolic volume, shown here in purple. Typically, only 70 milliliters gets pumped out, and that is the stroke volume, shown in orange. Ejection fraction is the fraction of blood in the ventricle that is pumped out. In this case, it would be 70 divided by 110, giving around 64%. A normal ejection fraction is between 55 and 70%. So, for example, if we take a normal resting heart rate of 70 beats per minute, this works out to be a cardiac output of 4,900 milliliters per minute, or nearly 5 liters per minute. In heart failure, the cardiac output produced isn't enough to perfuse the body. The most common causes of acute heart failure include myocardial infarction, acute valvulopathy, for example the sudden rupture of a papillary muscle in a patient who recently had an MI, generating an acute and massive mitral regurgitation. You can also have arrhythmias such as ventricular fibrillation and pulmonary embolism is another cause, as is myocarditis. Drugs can also lead to heart failure, for example overtreatment with beta blockers or inappropriate combinations like calcium channel blockers and beta blockers together. The most common feature of acute heart failure is shortness of breath or dyspnea. This can occur for several reasons, but one of the main ones is blood backlogging into the pulmonary circulation due to failure of the left ventricle to pump blood into the aorta, leading to pulmonary edema. Other signs and symptoms include chest pain, swelling in the peripheries, which is mostly due to a failure of the right side of the heart, causing blood to backlog into the veins, leading to extravasation of fluid and therefore swelling. This is most commonly seen in the ankles, and this is also the same reason why we see jugular venous distension. The liver can also enlarge as a result of this, and since we're talking acute heart failure, it can happen quickly and will therefore be painful. Weakness and cyanosis may be other manifestations. Physical exam findings include crackles at the lung bases, additional heart sounds, jugular venous distension, swelling of the ankles, and you would also evaluate the temperature of the peripheries to get an idea of the perfusion. Consider also the drug history to see if any of the medications may be causing the heart failure. An ECG will help in looking for causes such as a myocardial infarction or an arrhythmia. Lab investigations include looking at troponin levels if an MI is suspected. B-type natriuretic peptide or BNP may also be looked at, which is released in response to stretching of the ventricular walls due to an increased volume. You may also look at electrolyte levels, including sodium, potassium and calcium. Imaging studies include chest x-ray, which may show pulmonary edema, including increased dimensions of the heart shown by the cardiothoracic ratio that shows the proportion between the heart and the chest, and should normally be less than 0.5. The most common method of assessing heart failure definitively is cardiac ultrasound as it allows us to see the heart in real time, as well as to take measurements of the volumes, the thicknesses, the ejection fraction, and to see any abnormalities like valve defects. Treatment involves initially stabilizing the patient, which may include surgery to repair valves or reperfusion of a blocked coronary artery. Oxygen is likely to be given, and medications like diuretics to improve congestive symptoms, and in some situations, ionotropes, nitrates, and pain relief may be used. Mechanical assist devices like the aortic balloon pump can also be used. Long term, lifestyle changes would be recommended and drugs such as ACE inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers may be given. As well as this, beta blockers, statins and diuretics may also be added. Beta blockers are not usually given in acute heart failure due to the risk of exacerbating the failure but are used frequently in chronic heart failure.